Um, I'm really happy to see some uh, familiar faces, but even uh, happier to see some new faces. The purpose of opening HR Day is to show what the community is doing. We purposely have presentations just on the stuff that is actually running in production, because I think we've talked about OpenEHR for a number of years, and now we can definitely show examples of how this is used, not only here in the UK, but also internationally. So with that, um, I'll pass it on to my co-chair uh, at the OpenEHR Foundation, uh, Dr. Ian McNichol. So morning, everybody. Um, I'm Ian McNichol, so I'm one of the three co-chairs of what is now Open Air International. I'll explain what that is in a moment. Um, and I'm just going to give a very quick fly through in 10 minutes just to give you an overview. Uh, as Tomash says, there's quite a few familiar, familiar faces in the room, but there'll be a few of you who are new to this or fairly new to it. So this is just a little update of where we are in terms of Open EHR, Open Air. It's the same thing. It's just easier to say Open Air, I think. So what is it? So the headline of what is open air is it's an open specification for defining a health information model, which sounds a bit abstract. But the basic purpose is to support a new kind of way of building uh, health IT software, um, capable of supporting what some people would call an open platform ecosystem. Um, it's got to be vendor neutral, and it's got to be technology neutral. So it's not about silos and lock-in. And it's about trying to share some of the considerable burden of building health systems that everyone has, whatever sector they're in. It's deliberately licensed to allow both open and closed source business models. So although uh, some of the software that you'll see demonstrated is open source, other is also closed source. Some of the engines, the CDRs, they can be open or closed source. Open EHR as an organization, as a community, doesn't care. That's for, the, that's for the, the business to decide, the market to decide. But the specifications and the clinical models that we build, these are very definitely open source and free to use uh, without any, any real encumbrance. It is essentially a non-profit industry, uh, clinical domain community, um, and it's now technically actually two organizations, one called Open Air International and the other, the original Open Air Foundation. So, specifications, very quickly, we're not going to delve into any of that, but a whole bunch of the specs are written, uh, you know, as you would expect for any technical person, UML, and that's what tool builders, it's what CDR builders, data repository builders will use. But the other part of the story is about clinical information modeling, using these things called archetypes. And the critical part of our story is that we govern these two things quite independently. So the specifications people get on and change the specs, and clinicians like me, so I'm a former GP turned informatician, we work quite independently on the clinical data models. We call these things archetypes. Tomaj is going to talk much more about what these are and how they fit into the, the ecosystem. But fundamentally, these are open source components that can be used and reused directly within systems. We try to capture as many clinical perspectives as we can when we define these things, and we review them collaboratively and publish them internationally. We have a set of custom tools that we use. So this is uh, a, one of the archetype editing and template editing tools. And then we have our collaborative environment we call CKM that we use to get clinicians and other stakeholders to engage on deciding whether these models are fit enough to be published and then used by downstream systems. Something I've mentioned a couple of times is the idea of the clinical data repository, the CDR. Uh, and this is a core component if you're building a, a, an open air system, unless you're just interested in using the modeling environment for other purposes, a proper open EHR system is going to be built on one of these CDR clinical data repository, which essentially is a smart data store that natively understands these clinical data models that people that I built, like I build. And critically, it does that in a no engineering way. In other words, if I come up with a new data model like that new score that was up on the screen before, uh, and send it to an open air data engine, everything just works. Nobody has to sit down and re refactor database tables or re engineer it. All of the data is there and available via an API, and all of the data is there, uh, not just whatever the vendor chooses to expose. And we have vendor neutral uh, uh, querying, and everything works through standard APIs. You can build your own CDR if you want, that's not a problem, but it's a hard engineering exercise, and there are a number of different products available now, uh, built on different databases and database technologies. And ultimately, this comes to 
whoops. That's a rather pitiful uh, bit of applications. There's some images missing on that screen. So there should be another five or six different applications there. I don't know what happened there. Ultimately, this, though, is about supporting application building. And these are just a number of the apps that I've been working with uh, around the world. And you'll hear much more about these through the course of the day. OpenAir itself, we've just reconfigured ourselves. So originally it was the OpenEHR Foundation. We've just had a re-governance re and restructuring exercise. So we're now a community interest company called OpenAir International, or CIC. Uh, still a not-for-profit. Fundamentally, we are now member-owned. So we have three groups of members, individual subscribers, uh, industry partners, and organizations. And if you sign up as, uh, in, in one of those groups, and it's only 15 euros to sign up as an individual member, you get to vote people on and off uh, the board. But you are, th those uh, directors that you elect are essentially also owners of the company. So indirectly, if you're a subscriber, you are now also very definitely essentially a co-owner of, of, the, uh, uh, of the enterprise, not-for-profit enterprise. The Open EHR Foundation still exists, and we decided to keep it that way because it is the absolute lock of the intellectual property. Um, now, we may move these two things together in due course, but fundamentally, things will carry on working as they are, but we have had a major refresh of our governance. But alongside that is there's a big informal community working on different projects and critically, things like software programs, specification, clinical modeling, all happening. At this point, I just want to call out a couple of individuals who were absolutely instrumental in getting us to where we are today. And I'm delighted that, that two are actually in the audience. So Professor David Ingram, sitting here at the front, was essentially at the heart of getting this project going. So if you want to hear about the, the history, uh, speak to David. He's disappearing after lunch because he's got much more important duties uh, in the, the grand parenting role. But he was also like the grandfather of Open EHR. So I'm really delighted to have him here. And uh, please have a chat and, and, and ask him how, how things got started because it's an interesting story. And the other person who's here today, I hope, is Tom Beale, um, who most of you will know the name of. Tom, are you here? You can't see. Ah, he is. He's up at the back. So Tom is like the guru, right? And he's one of the first people I ever met in the open-air community. Uh, he has been fundamental to some of the real original thinking that's gone on and remains a really solid supporter of keeping the specs community working. So it's great to have you both here. And it would be fair not to mention Sam Hurd, who is, like myself, is a GP, uh, was a London GP, although he's from Australia. He's currently back in Australia. And he has two interesting jobs. He's, uh, I think, still CEO of Ocean Health Systems, uh, which is one of the open-air providers. He is a leader in outback medicine in the middle of Australia. And he's currently touring the west of Australia with a 12-piece band called the Cheeky Dogs. So he's got more things on his mind than coming to uh, here. So thanks to these people for their leadership. But fundamentally, we've gone from that original foundation somewhat based in, in good, strong academic research. And we're now at a position of having a really broad community. Lots of industry partner support, and we want more. Please come on board if you're a company that thinks that you want to get interested. All of the work that goes on has to be funded and resourced in some way. Much of it is done in kind. So this is the open-air clinical community. You know, we've got over 2,000 people signed up to that. Uh, 800 actively reviewing these archetypes, all done on a voluntary basis. Nobody gets paid for that work at all. We have organizational partners, um, uh, Norway, Slovenia. We also have the Chinese Red Army. They're not an official partner, but they are using uh, open-air software, which is quite fun. That's the specifications group, very hard at work, as you can see, in Alkmaar. At one of our, um, they do work occasionally. It's not, not all about beer drinking and this growing number of industry partners. And that was much of the goal that Tamaj and Celia, our, our co-chairs, had as we try to move open air from its strong foundations into this new world where much more industry involvement and activity. OK, so that's the end of the intro. Uh, we're actually bang on time, which is a miracle. Um, so I think we just start and we'll hand over to the first presenter. Um, Welcome, Mike Jones from Gartner. <laughs>